Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is May and I make videos to show things I am passionate about. But mostly my efforts in living a holistically decolonial life as best as I can. <laughs> um, I'm also a black woman with many hats, as many of us are. Um, because of my passion for holistic decolonial living, I also host sessions one-on-one -on -one or in groups or workshops. I want to do more of that next year. So if you're ever curious about that, you can always go down in my description box and then you'll find my website and then you can go and read about the sessions I offer, but also all the really lovely reviews I've gotten from people I've worked with before. I also run an echo print shop called Bloom Baby Bloom Studios. Um, where I get to share the things I love to draw, creatively, I've always loved drawing. So I'm living the dream of my inner child, bringing more of them to life as an adult. So I run an echo print shop where I draw things around the things that I value in holistic decolonization, womanism, um, soft existence affirmation. So you can always check that out. And I'm also budding little budding author. Um, I've written one book but it was more like a personal project that many of you have bought and I'm really grateful to that. Those are like the three pillars of what makes me me and the things I share digitally. Um, my holistic decolonial work and living a life that is intentionally balanced from mind, body, soul and surrounding as well as creativity, creating whether I'm creating videos for this channel and also bringing the things I have in my mind on paper in one way or the other. Person to person, I am just a person that feels that life is all about experiencing life. We all are very unique and, and in so many ways we owe it to ourselves to live a life that is reflective of that uniqueness and that authenticity and that truth and to continuously pursue that. The goal is never to be perfect, but in progress, and your goal is always in progress if you followed me on this channel for many years. So with all of that said, I wanted to make a video that's more like of a life update or how life has been lately. Um, just as a marker also for myself at this particular time in my life, um, but also for you guys to know what's going on behind the camera most of the time, especially because I feel like I'm not as intrigued or as inspired to share as much as I, I used to, especially on Instagram. Instagram would be, used to be my jam. Like I used to share more there, like even if I wasn't making videos, but even that I've been like a bit maybe uninspired. And like I always get to a place where I'm like, oh, maybe I could share this, but I can't get into the rhythm and I'm allowing that to be the reality of now. Um, and if that change is great, if not, it's okay. Maybe it's just telling me that that's not how I want to share anymore. I'm trying to get more into my blog, <laughs> the thing I pay for every year and I don't do as much on it. I use it more like as a place for people to know about things I work with. Um, and also it's the place where people book sessions through, but I, I wish I used it more than that. So I'm thinking now that I'm also trying to and I have more time for writing. Like I want to be more intentional by maybe using it in a different way. Like uh, honestly, like that's just, yeah, we're gonna see how I'm in a very fluid space in life. I think I've become more flexible as I've gotten older and I've become more willing to be patient. And I've also felt like spiritually that's where I am, but I will share more about the spiritual part of that a bit later. So. What have I been up to lately? The main things that have been occupying my life um, is getting used to my wonderful partner Delphine. You guys can also always check out like some of the work she does. She is a sound therapist and a musician and she shares sound journeys on um, her YouTube channel and they're really beautiful if you ever need something to soften your uh, nervous system or just calm down to check it out sometimes I use some of her tracks in my videos last year and most of this year obviously we've been just getting used to living together as a couple um, finding balance in the way of existing getting to know each other in a more intimate way because if you are new here or if you haven't heard like we are traveling through Europe in our caravan still traveling through our caravan um, in pursuit of finding our forever home together for that we were doing long distance so this is a new experience for us to live together to share space together and also to figure out how we can create a beautiful life together that is balancing both our unique needs 
Um, thankfully, we have a lot of things in common. We have a lot of values that are aligned. So that's not going to be so challenging, but it's more finding a place that we both feel like there's a lot of potential for the things we love to do. So I guess that will be the first phase of update. So the last year we were traveling mostly towards the Balkans and then when we came back to France, the goal was to live in different parts of France that we are both very curious about um, and check out where we might want to buy land. So, and build a home or get a home that we need to renovate. So we have that for France, but we also both love Portugal. You guys know if you follow me on this channel, I love Portugal. I really, really had a strong connection to Portugal. So we want to both check out France and Portugal before we decide where to live. And our time in France is slowly coming to an end. Um, we've spent several months here and we've lived in different areas. And the way that we've thought about doing that in a way that allows us to really get a feel of the place, but also in a very economical way has been volunteering through Workaway, which has been a blessing. <laughs> I've always been curious about Workaway and fun fact, Delphine and I met because of Workaway, but that's a whole other story for another time. Um, but doing it together, it's our first time. It's the first time me doing it. When we met, I was hosting her as a host, and now we're doing it more as both of us being volunteers. And this has been an eye-opening experience, guys. Like it's, it's given me an opportunity to try out the things I've always maybe read about, been curious about, um, obsessed about digitally like I get into like I've always been really curious about tiny living um, sustainable living cob house building having your own garden but there's also things that we want to implement on our own land when we get land one day or when we buy a house to renovate or buy a dream house whatever that might look like and the goal with this part of our travel is picking areas that we think we could settle down, living with people who already live there, learning from their experiences, learning from their mistakes, um, learning about the area, its advantages and disadvantages, um, trying to see different opportunities that might be there, especially for Delphine as a French folk musician, but also a sound therapist. Um, there's always those things that we're like, okay, how, what is it realistically going to look like if this was home? And it's one of the best ways to do it because even when we are in the place, we get to build a little community. So the place doesn't feel as foreign as if you were there, like traveling as a tourist. So it's been a very wonderful way of learning about places, learning about people, learning, getting to feel the energy of an area. Um, and we are very methodical about it. We have a document where we take notes of the places we've been and we try to um, remember the things we learned there, the things that the wonderful hosts have shared with us, how we felt to be there, our impressions of the area, um, opportunities. So we make like a kind of like a, a review of each place. And the goal is like after we've spend a few months in Portugal as well which I'm honestly really looking forward to because yeah I just really like Portugal but at this time I also feel like maybe now I've overhyped it in my own head even though I've been there I don't want to overhype it for myself or for you but like just it's a place that I felt really um, uh, connected to in some way while I was there so while we are there we're also going to do the same like pick some areas we think of living in and then also review those things that are very important for us in a place we might choose. So that's what we're currently doing. Um, we've spent several months in, uh, in France and we've been really impressed by the places that we were interested by, but we feel like we, if it ends up being France, we have found an area that really um, is hitting a lot of the things that we both like. So we're really excited about that. We've found places that we feel like, okay, we could buy land here, that we could build a home here, and we could uh, see the community that we might actually enjoy having around us if we decide to live here. It's a very diverse place. It's a very open place with sublime, with amazing nature, which is very important for me. You got all your like places to go swimming, places to go in nature, camping, hiking. It's just a very beautiful place and it has like mountains, it has hills, the rivers, not too far from the ocean, not too far from the sea, not too far from beaches. So 
it has a lot of and the way of life is also very alternative you're welcome to guess if you dare to guess what kind if you know friends of it what i felt like has been very beautiful that we've been learning has been because if we buy land whether we're buying land or home to renovate we're both city girls. Like I grew up mostly in cities and so did Delphine in the suburbs of Paris. So we don't have a lot of like everyday practical skills. Me and my mom still managed. <laughs> As an eldest African sister, I was obviously often assigned the role of um, handyman. And that gave me a lot of confidence. So I, but my tools never went beyond knowing how to screw things together. And now we have been working with big machineries, like there are other tools, power tools that I didn't know how to use. I'm not going to attempt remembering all the names of the tools, but just a lot of tools that I would see as somebody who hasn't had practice with that and feel intimidated by. But we've been working with people who have to do that because most of the people live in um, more rural places, like in the countryside. Our ideal situation is buying a space that is a bit out of like a bigger space, like a bigger city or bigger town, but like maybe at least like an hour, maximum like an hour or so, where you have a good amount of nature surrounding you. So because that's where we imagine, how we imagine to live, we've been trying to volunteer with people working on projects and things that we want to implement, um, but people who are also doing things that we want to learn how to do. Um, just to name a few, like we've worked with a, a woman who was, um, taking care of her family land and she was like just a badass lady who knew how to use all the tools like she was just amazing in all the things that she taught us and especially being a woman who was doing all this shit by herself it was really inspiring like to make you feel like you too can do it and the more experience we have the more confidence we gain and the more confidence we gain the more excited we are about the opportunities of what we are gonna create and how to create it but also a beautiful part of it like there was maybe things ideas we had before that now we're like okay this is how realistically it is to own a lot of land this is what you need to keep in mind with management management of that land this is what you need to keep mindful of um, if you plant a big garden the care of it this is what you need to keep in mind if you choose a different a certain region and the kind of weather that that region has so just it's been really in, an enriching experience i feel like i'm engaging in life in a whole different way like from my previous years as a student and then like working mostly in offices and living in cities like i'm i'm more hands-on i'm doing more things with my hands and i am cultivating that part of me that also has enjoyed has been enjoying being more in nature being in places where the loudest thing you hear are birds and that has been so healing for not only mine, but also my partner's nervous system. I think we've both felt much calmer, much more connected to ourselves and to nature. And that by itself has been like a wonderful, wonderful um, experience because it's like that calling that has been in both of us to seek living in more nature. Even before we met, like that was always my dream. I've always shared that with you guys to find a little home with a little garden. <laughs> Um, and my partner shared the same her that was also very important to find a place where we could be tranquil, you know, like very um, serene spaces with mostly nature where we can have a slower pace of life. So we're practicing that before we get to that and trying it out in different places. So we've been learning a lot about tools, power tools, how to build things, how to fix things. Um, and also one of my favorites, like how to grow food organically and environmentally friendly. Um, we've been learning a lot about permaculture, like all these things that were before just theory, like getting to practice them. Some of you who've been here very long remember my time in Brazil and how in love I was with that aspect of my life, like living on a big piece of land, growing things, taking care of plants. I was just learning again, like to put things into practice. And this opportunity has like expanded that and it gives you a more realistic idea of your dreams and your visions and what in reality it will take for you to care for those things and, and to bring them into fruition, but for them also to um, bloom holistically. And like even the idea of a garden, like we were volunteering at a fig and olive tree um, project 
for a wonderful couple and their child and they also had a permaculture garden that was made in these beautiful um, spiral shapes and learning about how you put different plants together but also learning about how much care that needs but also eating the food that came directly from that land and the efforts you were putting in. That for me is just, I needed that experience. I've been craving that experience to eat food that is cultivated on the land, to eat food that is organically and consciously created. Um, and we've been living with people who love their projects, who, who are living passion projects, but also are so open to share the challenges of those passions and not to go in it with dreamy eyes but to realize okay a lot of things in life are hard is this the kind of heart that you would be fine with is there a way to make it less hard more enjoyable more easeful right so that has been something that we've been really fortunate to keep time in our life too uh, and delphine as a musician and a sound therapist like she's been working with different people on different projects um, performing in different places and um, even being inspired for creation of sound journeys and music like it's been also really beautiful in both our creativity like at one place we stayed we ate a lot of tomatoes we've never ate so many tomatoes of different variety and it just like I felt like my whole life was tomatoes taking care of the tomatoes harvesting the tomatoes coming up with dishes that contain tomatoes so there's been a whole way of connecting to land but also like um Navigating that space, especially as somebody who's really into decolonialism, but also someone who grew up in Europe and recognizing that I am very influenced by a European culture. My partner is also half European and half uh, um, West African. So like both of us, like having a different connection to Europe, but more about the land and the knowledge and the wisdom that people here also have of that and not seeing it as just as easily as that black and white. I think when you um, grew up in this kind of this part of the world where you grow up to over value or over idolize European ways of living because that's what you're taught is like there's no better place in the world than to be in the western world and at the same time when you do explore further and you learn about decolonization and you learn about slavery and you, then you also see the cracks of that reality and then that can invite you maybe to, to feel more hostile which for me i think all of these things are beautiful journeys and phases you have to go through all of them and then like finally getting to a place where like even for me like reconnecting more with african knowledge african ways of living and then also visiting back home and recognizing how foreign i felt even my partner also how foreign she feels and then trying to find your own way of living and reconciliation of the reality the unique reality that you have which is neither fully european or neither fully african um, but it's something in between and the best that you can do for yourself is find the best of both worlds and create a different way of living, a different identity for yourself. And that has been really humbling. Even when we travel towards um, the Balkans and to expand our idea, our idea of whiteness, it also gives you a different way of seeing this, but also recognizing how colonialism is not just something that happened to other parts of the world, but the strategy and even the philosophy and values that created such a, a monster as colonialism were already tried out on this part of the world, colonizing people by maybe more powerful or bigger parts of Europe, um, and then enforcing one way for Like, it's just been a very enriching and eye-opening um, experience, this European slow travel through our caravan and finding different places to call home but also even with the idea of where would we settle down if we stay here like i think when i was younger i always felt like no i want to go somewhere home like and for me home felt like uganda and then growing up and visiting uganda and recognizing well i don't really fully fit in here and and also being in a queer relationship like i wouldn't thrive here and it's the same for my partner and then being like okay so where would we call home maybe there is other places that where we could have an authentic existence um, with the truths that we've discovered for our own life and journey through our unique mesh of life experiences and find a place that feels more at home. So just to say all of that, I've had like a bigger appreciation of the land, recognizing that 
like the earth is earth first it's not europe it's not africa it's not what have you it's just the people who live there and that energy of course is important um that history and connection to the land is important but you could see and meet earth and the spirit of earth the spirit of the universe anywhere and to be open minded towards that and to not assume that it can only belong here or there so that has been complex but it's still something that i am exploring and it's a beautiful phase of the phases i've been in um but that are all are connected and i feel like make me a fuller being and are expanding my perspective in life so stay tuned i guess for more of those kinds of talks so with that in mind i have also been enjoying a lot um learning a lot about herbal medicine and herbal plants I feel like I'm in my herb era, you know, but also farm may era. I feel um and all of these things have been a part of me in 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 value, in desire, but like to actually live it. Like our last volunteer was in an ecological um farmer. So we were volunteering with him. He has a wife and she's really into herbs and so she was teaching us a lot about herbs and Oh, but even before her like the previous people like I've been learning more about herbs basically how to use them especially someone who has had a lot of difficulties with my moon cycle and finding ways to have a more healthy and more grounded but also a more natural way of healing and caring for myself that has always been something I'm passionate about this was like the next level for me like learning more about herbs it's expanding my knowledge about holistic healing as well but it also made me think a lot about my grandmother um and she was also a very big herbal woman and i feel like maybe even for her time it was just natural people lived a lot with herbs i remember when i went back to visit as an adult like all the things she would tell me about herbs and all the things she would tell me like this is really good for that that's really good um for this and even in my lugano which i do speak and understand but like of course uh, she was saying things that were more expensive than the vocabulary i i speak with with my mom or with my aunts on the phone every few blue moons um but i remember feeling really connected to her in that way maybe i didn't connect a lot with her anymore religiously since i left religion and maybe not in the way that i wanted to live my life but that was a precious part of me to connect with her like also she used to be like a seamstress so and i love me a good fabric <laughs> um and she used to be really good at it like making things really well i think like that's really a big thing from my my mother's family so even connecting to heritage even though you're so far away and the more i learn about herbs and that like even what i'm drinking now it's a mixture of herbs i found around the property and um i'm now drinking certain herbs depending on different parts of my cycle so doing all of that and being more connected with nature more connected with the earth but also realizing that that's also a connection that i have with my own ancestry with my late grandmother on my mother's side and how even my late grandfather on my father's side was really into natural living simple living my mom told me many years later when i was being more curious about my father's side because i didn't grow up on my father's side that he used to be really into photography and he's to um uh, make a living for his whole family by being a uh, a creative which is really wild to think about during those times because this was like many years ago like early 1900s um but he was a creative and he was a a gentle beautiful man when he stopped being a photographer like he retreated to his ancestral land and took care of um the land and produced food and he loved that connection with the earth of uh farming and creating food for himself and his family and just these things like this exploration of living in this way like has also made me weirdly enough like so far away from Uganda like but feel more connected to the people that came before me and the wisdom and I I I pray for their guidance in that in finding a way to use that of course of course for my own healing but like the things i'm curious about and to expand my understanding of our connection with the earth from that perspective um yeah so that has been really cool and i can't wait to learn more and grow more in this aspect of my life i've also been enjoying a different way of uh 
caring for my body because I spend a lot of time outside now, right? And I do a lot of things that demand a lot of flexibility, a lot of strength, more than before, like where I needed to make sure like I put in my walks, I put in my um, strength training. Now a lot of it is like lived exercise. <laughs> And that has changed also my relationship to how I balance that part of my wellness um, practice and spending time getting dirt under my fingers and remembering like, okay, a lot of ways of also getting like, for example, B12 and a lot of other healthy bacteria is also good when you are in touch with the earth. Um, spending a lot of time getting sun vitamin directly from the sun. <laughs> and not taking it artificially as I've had to depend on especially when I lived in the north and just seeing how that makes me feel like holistically like moving in a way that is good for my body and then being in touch and spending time in the fresh air which is also good for my body but also my spirit my soul my mental state that has also been a different way of practicing like holistic wellness um and then it has also evolved my yoga practice, which for a while I had taken a break, but then I've slowly gotten back to it and I have more confidence in my sequences. Um, at one of my work away, that was part of my work away service at some point, like to hold a little yoga class. And I really enjoyed that. Like that was really fun. And it's made me also like uh, practice also in a different way for myself um, where I feel more confident in the flow of it like what also the presence of it and craving it in a different way so that has been really really interesting another thing I, I wanted to share is like my journey through creating a more intentional community to be honest I thought because we were traveling and would be on the move especially the first part of our move like of our slow travel towards the Balkans we met like maybe just one couple that we are still friends with during this way of, of living when we met them on a beautiful campsite while we were in a, the coastal part of Croatia um, but besides that it was mostly me and my partner now with the volunteering we're meeting so many people and the beautiful thing about it most of the people we meet are also quite similar in the values they hold because of course we find them and they accept application based on you know similar values or philosophies so that has been really interesting that i thought that oh okay yeah i might finding community will only happen when i settle down somewhere but we've actually been finding community as we travel we've met so many people who started out as strangers who just had things in common and now we consider them dear friends, um, where we've even advanced, like on the projects we wanna work on together, having have to come back, that we've met people that we genuinely wanna have in our lives. And also as a couple who lived in different spaces, who had different communities. Um, and of course, when we visit each other, like I meet some of Delphine's family friends and she would do the same for my end. Um, but now we are creating community together, people who have met us for the first time as a couple and people who become our friends as a couple, they are our friends, you know? And that has been very beautiful to experience and witness. One of my manifestations for this year was cultivating um, tender relationships, more um, grounded friendships, friendships that are rooted in things that we have more in common. And as I said before, like I had this feeling that, oh, that maybe will happen more when I've settled, when I'm starting the projects, when I'm learning about the community around me and building it but I didn't expect it to come on the road, on the journey. Um, and finding people that kind of get your vibe and get who you are and get how you want to exist in the world. People that live alternatively, think alternatively, because if you live alternatively, most times out of 10, you think alternatively. So feeling less alone because we meet so many people who are more like us as well, uh, more than maybe we had in our previous community because those are maybe people you grew up with or people who met you at a different part people we still obviously like cherish um, and people who are also like cheering us on on this venture and pursuit but people who maybe have not chosen a similar path which is also great like I always love having a diverse group of friends um, because you learn a lot and you don't get stuck and rigid because you have your foot in different ways of life and different ways of thinking um, but it's also wonderful to be and meet more people who share your visions and your values and your philosophy, who are still, of course, different and unique 
and uh, think differently in other ways or apply it differently in many ways, but you feel like your way of living is not that strange or what you desire for your life is not that strange. But yeah, it's been a beautiful thing to experience and to meet community this way. Another thing I feel like this phase of my life is really teaching me is, or like opening up to is, for many years, and I think like maybe you guys feel the same way, like there's a lot of time where you are probably learning about stuff or wanting to imagine how you like to live, the things you like to implement and embody. But I feel like I'm in a phase of my life that is about embodiment. Also, I think it's with age, which is a beautiful thing that I always share in my holistic session and also on this channel that for me, growth and healing is spiral. You might meet the same things over and over again, but you are somewhere different. You all have different tools, different perspective. And so if you even if you experience a similar thing, um, you are going to go through it differently and you are going to see how you've grown or even the levels of healing that, the levels of um, working through that or walking through that. So I feel like I'm at a place where I'm continuing my spiral of growth and healing um, and expansion and also like grounding in myself, in my essence, in my unique um, ways of existing. And I found more confidence in that. It's almost like with the yoga practice, like that feeling of confidence of maybe not just putting on a, a video, but like having confidence just to follow my own flow and seeing that that's what I need and that I've learned and seen enough to pull what I need as an individual. And it's the same with things that maybe I've struggled with before, like having this feeling that I've grown and I've learned enough to actually go through like maybe similar challenges that might come back, but in a more smoother, in a more, more assured and confident way because of the practice I've had, because of the tools I've collected, because of the growth I've experienced in other areas. Um, and that has been really beautiful. Like I feel like I'm in a beautiful phase of embodiment. Um, spiritually, I think I'm also in a beautiful space of enjoying the foggy space <laughs> um, and knowing how beautiful that space is because that's when you have time to be with yourself, be with your fears, be with your triggers if they come up and also find more ways to ground yourself in unknown spaces and to stay focused but also present at the same time to practice patience is not just something you need to get like get over with but that patience by itself is a it's a virtue of course but like it it creates something within you that's also beneficial to you it's not just something that oh okay, i need to be patient but by practicing patience i'm also rewarding myself if that makes sense it's healing me it's um benefiting me to practice patience you know not that oh it's worthy because it will get me to the next thing basically like less focus on the next thing and valuing the things i need to practice or the things i i am growing more disciplined in the things i'm growing more confident in and enjoying the practice part of it and enjoying what i become in the practice of it my the spiritual part of my holistic development um, that has been really wonderful to see and experience but with the travels also I have been missing my family I've been missing my mom more like I'm going full circle I think like when you like that's a whole video by itself but basically like healing from a place of like over idolizing maybe your your mom recognizing all the ways that maybe they failed you but also recognizing again like they are human and then getting to a place where you also are growing and getting to a place where you then also find yourself having more compassion for them um, and then getting to a place of appreciation like a full circle like based in reality based in knowing the mm, the shadow part of it and the light part of it and seeing the beauty in all of that like I'm also getting that a lot with my mom and then I have like this big sense of of missing her in a different way than I did before. I could even tear up, but I also know that my moon is coming next week, so. <laughs> um, but that has been really beautiful with the distance and talking to each other and calm, um, on the phone. Um, and when I've been uh, through certain things and I was like, oh, I really need to call my mom. and the wisdom that she's given me and the wonderful support. And despite being an, a, tr a traditional African mom in some way, she's also very liberal and very, um, what do you call it? Like 
very encouraging of you finding your own path. And I felt that a lot during this journey. It's like, I call her and she's like, oh, I love that. I tell her about the different projects I do. I'm like, I love that for you, May. If I was in the same position as you, I would do exactly what you're doing. Just go see the world, travel, explore things, and don't stress yourself about things, and just find your, if you are happy. I'm, like, it's just, it's beautiful and it's encouraging to know that the person who created you brought you to this earth also feels like maybe there's not everything she agrees with, everything that I think or want to live, or even the way that I'm in love with someone who she's struggling, but also trying her best to make space for, which I really, really appreciate. Um, but it means a lot that she is so supportive in, a, in me pursuing a life that I don't have a lot of... Uh, um, people in front of me to look at. I told her at our last conversation, I feel like I've always been walking in the forest with my own machete and making my own path. And as exciting as that can be sometimes, it's also exhausting, it's scary. And sometimes I wish I was walking a path someone already has walked a bit and prepared a bit. Um, and sometimes it feels like that, but like it, her words were really encouraging in the sense of like, I trust you and I trust I trust, I've always trusted you as a child and I trust your way of seeing life and, and that's really beautiful. Like even though I don't always agree, I, I trust you with your life and that's a beautiful thing and I always try to also practice that for myself and that's something that my mom did to us as kids, like trust people with their life and treat them accordingly and support them where you can but know that their life is theirs and unique to their own experience. But So there's been that. <laughs> I think that's it guys so also like update on the channel like the next few videos I want to start um, putting together I've started putting together the beginning of our travels to the through the Balkans and our beginning of making this a reality from dream to here we are this is what we're living um, and so like I I want to share some of those videos with you guys so keep an eye out for that that should be the next video if not the third next video to start working on releasing those ones um, during autumn winter um, otherwise I'm also excited about the calm fall and winter season to get to work more on other inner projects so since I won't be out as much finding ways to pour more into working on my books um, building my echo print shop um, and also preparing what kind of things I want to challenge with myself next year, hopefully. Um, for example, like maybe, maybe a workshop <laughs> of some sort, like bringing my stuff more out into like a physical community, which is another thing I'm learning more, that I'm enjoying more being in the physical world, like being more in this world rather than online um, even though the online world will always be precious to me I've learned a lot I've grown a lot and I continue to want to share and add to the beauty of that in my own way um, but I've been really falling a lot in love with existing and being present and being <laughs> and being outside <laughs> so I feel like I'm also gonna have time to go more inward and create more go back more to my digital space time and create more because yeah the weather will invite me to do more of that as it too will be going more inward you know so I look forward to that and what that will inspire and how I will progress on certain things because of that because I want to be forever a student of life and forever in awe of the beauty of the things that come my way the things I learn at this old ripe age <laughs> and will continue to learn um yeah so here's to that here's to um living in the moment practicing more patience um being more in real life <laughs> um slowing down healing our nervous system and as always blooming wherever we might be planted so do share with me what kind of season you feel you're in how has the year been for you what are you hoping to pursue more in the next coming year if you've made it this far? Things. Also, like what things you'd like to see more of um, content-wise that would just help me prioritize better. <laughs> and also, if you like it here, remember to subscribe. If you like this video, remember to like it. Um, if you have something to say, remember to comment below. Otherwise, do take care and I will see you, obviously, in my next video. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you so much.
Oh no.